Hello again and welcome to Spotlight, the interview show on our team. I'm Al Grunov and today we'll talk about a strange language. Europanto is a mixture of words and grammar rules borrowed from a number of European languages which anyone of average culture and basic knowledge of English can understand and even speak. It was born in Brussels, the capital of the European Union. Could this language become an alternative to English as an international means of communication? To talk about it, our guest today is Signor Diego Marani, the man who developed Europanto. Diego Marani is an Italian novelist and newspaper columnist working as a policy officer for culture and languages at the European Commission in Brussels. He is the creator of Europanto, an English-based mixture of languages that many Europeans use to communicate with each other. Since 1996, Diego has been writing a weekly column on Europanto language for the Swiss Daily Letemps. He has published different articles, short stories and produced video clips using this language. In 1999, he published a collection of short stories in Europanto and French which has taken him to the notorious French cultural program Bouillon de Culture. His last novel, Nova Grammatica Finlandese, has received the prestigious Grinzani Cavo Prize in Italy and was hailed by the critics as a revelation in new Italian literature. Diego Marani is our guest in the studio today to talk about Europanto and its use. Hello, Mr. Marani. Welcome to the show. Hi, Hello. thank you. Thank you very much uh, for being with us. Or should I say, buongiorno, monsieur? <laughs> Seguramente, por speak Europanto, tu just mix parolas from different yazik and harashot. Even including Russian. Harashot, tu es dobro Europanto <laughs> spicante. <laughs> Kaine stadi necessite, kaine grammatica, just invente. Fantastic. <laughs> I must say that Europanto is a joke, is a provocation. Uh, it is not my intention to propose another uh, European language, another artificial language. I believe in true languages. Mm -hmm. And actually this is why I developed this idea. My joke, my provocation is intended to push people to play with languages, mm -hmm. to try to learn them, mm -hmm. because they, it is possible to learn them also playing. Mm -hmm. so, so, so actually uh, what you're saying is that, is that uh, this is not like a grammatically strict uh, language and means of communications and uh, so you can call uh, one thing different words including uh, well, I mean, de depending on which word come, comes to your brain like you, you, can call it, you can call it a thing, a chose, a stuchka, or whatever comes to your mind yeah? whatever comes to your mind mm -hmm. the idea, the roughly general idea is to put together what is generally understandable all over Europe. Mm -hmm. If I say muchacha, mm -hmm. mamma, pizza, mafia, mm -hmm. Napoli, blitzkrieg, mm -hmm. bazook, chauffeur, harasho, mm -hmm. sayonara, mm -hmm. you've got plenty of words coming no, from different languages. I didn't get that languages. sayonara, what's sayonara? Sayonara is a Japanese to say hello, goodbye. Ah. If, you, <laughs> if you put together all these words, well, you have a, a, a series of words that are understandable all over Europe. And that can produce other words. Mm -hmm. But again, my idea is just to push people to understand that languages have always been mixing, that we do not have to be scared to see our language polluted by mm -hmm. words coming from different languages. Mm -hmm. It is a process, and uh, you can accompany this process. Would you call, would you call Europanto just sort of a pidgin English? Or, or is it, how how well, different it is? Well, indeed, the idea is this one. We had Latin in Europe uh, in the Middle Ages, and uh, Latin developed in today's languages. I mean, Portuguese, uh, French, Italian, Romanian are languages that came out from Latin mixing with other languages. And this happened also to Slavic languages. Well, the uh, ancient Slavonic language produced many different Slavic yeah, languages. Russian, Polish, well, so on. So it Bulgaria. is a well-known process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just the individual, a single man, cannot mm -hmm. perceive this process during his life because it's too short. But if it's, if it's a natural process that happened, why do you want to reverse it? <laughs> well, I do not want to intervene in the process. I'm not a mad uh, scientific uh, that tries to change the world. I just want to push people to be more strict 
on languages, to not, not to be scared of the mistake. When you make a mistake, it's communicative. It makes people laugh in another language. Mm -hmm. And when you laugh, you, co you communicate. You, you're already having friends in this new language. Mm -hmm. So as we in Europe need uh, to learn other people's languages, to, to be able to communicate, my message is this one. Play with languages. Try to speak even when you think you you not understand. Actually, you can understand the language. Uh, Diego, did you actually invent the language, or were it uh, it already existed in the in the structures of the European Union in Brussels? Well, in working in the European Union institutions, you tend to mix languages mm -hmm. because we are all uh, people speaking different languages. Sometimes we understand some languages, sometimes we don't, and so we tend to mix up words and to uh, develop this. Uh, uh, European uh, language. But again, uh, in a way, I invented nothing new because uh, everywhere where languages mix, the, where languages encounter each other, they mix, they produce new languages. I just tried in an instinctive way to produce something that was understandable, that is understandable for the middle mm -hmm. European. Mankind has actually seen several attempts to create an international auxiliary language. So far, Esperanto has been the most successful of them all, or has it? Spotlight Ilana Demidova has more. 